right, guys, welcome to the homestead. So today we're going to do a video. Uh, I'm wearing a sweatshirt today. I can't wear my stupid should hurt shirt because it is like 16 degrees outside. And so um, it's cold. And in my office where I film uh, my studio, uh, it's pretty cold in here because the wood, wood stove is in the other room. Anyway, I wanted to do this video and this is going to be kind of a tinfoil hat video, but it's something that I was just pondering over and it's really about why we become homesteaders. We become homesteaders because we see the financial situation, the economic situation in our country. We're $34 trillion in debt now. And years ago, when we had a lot less debt, most of us saw the mathematical certainty that was already written upon the wall. And we started to make changes in our lives so that we could withstand the thing that we have seen, if you're a student of history, over time and time and time again. And that's the eventual collapse of an empire. Um, we see that our food production in this country is basically a bunch of poisons, a bunch of chemicals. We want to be able to raise our own food, whether that's gardens or whether that's animals. Um, and so we make all the, we see the crime going up in the places uh, that are more urban and we want to get to a place more rural because again, being a student of history, you see that when things really get bad, it's people who live in a more rural setting have a better chance and opportunity to have the least amount of disruption in their lives. All these things and more that we have talked about ad nauseum on my channel. I see a lot of stuff just really happening right now. It's like it's 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 really driving home the point of why we do what we do as homesteaders. Now, okay, so you have this World Economic Forum, the WEF, and you have this thing China. That's China really wants to get Taiwan. China really wants to be the economic powerhouse of the world. They want to be a naval power. I saw, I believe it was Subbrief posted the stats. I think the United States Navy is producing 100,000 tonnage of shipping per year. And China is 30, let's say 30, over 30 million tons of shipping in their Navy every year. 100,000 tonnage, 30, over 30 million in tonnage. It's like, it's not even close. So, and right now our, our, mil our Navy is very technologically advanced, but still they're making great strides. If you remember our shipping during World War II, we basically outproduced everybody. And that was one of the reasons we won World War II. Anyway, all that to say. You have this alignment that I'm seeing with the World Economic Forum and China. Okay, now what do I mean by that? The World Economic Forum is trying to get everyone in line with their ideology, with their policies, with their plan. And the United, most of the West has already fallen in line. They're not happy about it. Are you guys seeing the whole, all that stuff going on with the German farmers and the Dutch farmers, you know, bringing out their tractors and throwing poo on the government buildings and they're not happy. They're very angry, but they're going about this the wrong way. You don't <clears throat> instill political change by driving your tractor to the Capitol and throwing poo on the government buildings. All that does is become an annoyance to the bureaucrats and politicians in those places. If you want to enact change, you grab your rifles and you go to those same buildings and you, you do what you need to be doing to enact change. And that's what puts the fear of God. But see, they don't have that ability, okay? They've taken that ability away from those people groups in those countries. But for the most part, these European countries have fallen in line with the policies that the WEF has enacted, promoted, and the politicians and the powers are, are falling in line. And the people are falling in line because they, no, they have no recourse. With the United States, that's not happening. It's not happening, guys. We are we are pushing back. You have free speech outlets like Rumble and Twitter, and people can post all the things and talk about all the things that would get me in trouble here on YouTube. And we are armed to the teeth. <laughs> if you go and try to like what they were talking about in New York and go door to door and like start taking away children out of homes because they're not didn't get that thing, you know, um, there's going to be open and armed bloody rebellion. The people are just not going to stand for that. You know, it's just not going to happen. And the WEF knows that. And so their last seemingly sticking point 
is this rebellious and obnoxious country called the United States. What are we going to do? Hmm. And then China, China's got this problem. They really want to get Taiwan. They really want to become an economic powerhouse. They're, uh, you know, going headstrong into this whole BRICS thing and establishing their world dominance in places like Africa and other places. Ethiopia was one of the places that was an, um, adopted into the BRICS nations. And Ethiopia has a lot of resources, one of them being gold. And so they brought them in. You're like, why Ethiopia? Ethiopia? Why Ethiopia? In fact, a bunch of other countries got passed over. Ethiopia was like, come on in here. <laughs> Look at all this money you got. Come on in. <laughs> so they got brought in. Well, if, if China has a definite policy and agenda that they are pushing and the WEF has a definite policy and agenda they are pushing and they have this, they both have the same sticking point, this obnoxious country called the United States. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. Okay. I don't, I forgot who said that. You know, I like to memorize quotes. Um, maybe it was Sun Tzu. Someone leave a comment below if you can find out who said that. <clears throat> anyway, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. I see an alignment of WEF policies and China policies, WEF agenda and China agenda. That's what I see right now, an alignment of those policies. Most of you have probably heard the rumors of 400,000 Chinese nationals. I remember back in high school, I went to a military, a naval academy for high school, and they we talked about it back then. Because of China's one-child policy, there was so many men being born into Ch in China because they didn't they put the 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 birthing of male children way above the birthing of female children. Every family wanted to have that male child that they could pass on. But what happened was they had all these men, millions upon millions of men who will never ever reproduce, who will never ever find wives. In fact, if you go back and look at history, most men throughout history never propagated. You know, the, most men, I think, I forgot the percentage, it's like 70% or something like that. Someone can find it and leave a comment below. But it was like some high percentage of men that have ever existed all throughout history have never propagated. Most of them dies in wars, they get disease or whatever. Most men that have existed all throughout history never propagated. And that's true still in China today. You have all these millions of men. And now we're seeing reports of 400,000 approximately in 2023 male Chinese nationals that have crossed the southern border and are now existing in the United States. If just a small percentage of those had clandestine intentions and were activated they could cause complete and total havoc in this country. So one of the reasons I'm doing this video today is because um, I went to uh, a consult uh, in Missouri recently. I've been doing a number of consults and um, it's been really kind of keeping me off my videos. I got a lot of stuff going on right now. Um, this dad just became the dad of a, <laughs> a licensed driver recently in the, in the household. I'm doing... I I've got a lot of things going. I'm spinning a lot of plates and juggling a lot of, you know, bowling pins. So, um but I'm I'm looking at all this stuff going on and I'm I'm like I got to do a video about this because this really defines why we become homesteaders. We're seeing the world unravel as it is. The pure insanity that's out there. And um I was at a recent consult and and we just wanted to talk about some of this and why some of these things are happening and, and maybe some of the things we can prepare for or their family could prepare for that are coming down the pike. So this is one of the things I see. I see the WEF and China align. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. They can work together. The WEF has this sticking point. They cannot get the United States to fall into line. China really wants to take Taiwan. They really want to establish itself as a world economic power, a military power, um, a, 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 a blue Blue Water Navy is what it's called, the Blue Water Navy. And they're not right now. They want to be that. The United States absolutely is that. And so if they fall into alignment on what they want, if their goals align, you can see them working together. I absolutely could see them working together. Now, all of this, let's just set that aside for a second and go to what's happened just recently. And that is this upcoming, I don't even know if I can say it. Can I say it? We'll see if I get in trouble. But Google sent out notice about an event that will be happening or could be happening in February. That's like a month away. 
to its advertisers that you are not allowed to talk about the event. What? 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 Are you, are you, are you kidding me? No, we will not be allowing discussion. You know, I, I forgot all the words. You can find it online. In fact, I'll leave a link in the description below here about this event. You cannot talk about it. We don't know. People are speculating what it could be. Could it be Michelle Obama running for office? Could it be Gavin Newsom jumping into the race? Could it be some sort of false flag event? Who knows? Could it be a crackdown, a major crackdown of law enforcement on going beyond the January 6th debacle and going out and just rounding up conservatives, brown shirt style, 1938, you know, Germany, who knows? What is this thing they're talking about in February? I don't know. But it's raising a lot of speculation. So here's here's what I see on the horizon. As someone who believes in the Bible, as someone who has a, a religious biblical worldview, not just a religious worldview, but because religion can be all kinds of crazy stuff, doctrines, man-made doctrines, traditions of men. No, no, no. I have a very, I think, a biblical worldview. I believe that the United States is Mystery Babylon, as spoken of in the book of Revelation. Now, the way I make that case to be is because that we are a consumer-based country, and it's the merchants of the world that cry out on the day, the day that this mystery Babylon is destroyed. Now, I could be wrong on this. Calm down, all you keyboard commandos. <laughs> we are not mystery Babylon. That's something else. Okay, I'm just giving you my perspective. It's the merchants of the world that cry out. We are the best customer of the merchants of the world. If we died, if we were just wiped out and deleted tomorrow, or our ability to purchase and consume was just gone tomorrow, the merchants of the world would cry out as they saw their golden goose fall over dead. <laughs> and not to mention the fact that you have this giant statue standing, in my opinion, again, in my opinion, I'm a veteran, I'm a patriot, I love America, I love our liberty. But Lady Liberty that stands in New York Harbor is based, when you get back to it, on a Babylonian goddess. You can trace her, Libertas is the goddess you can trace Liberty to. And then from there, it's Eleutheria, I believe. And from there, it's, um, is it Aphrodite or Artemis? I think it's Aphrodite. But anyway, you can trace all these goddesses because they, they're all the same goddess. They're all the same goddess. You can trace that back the fertility goddess, all the way back to ancient Babylon and Semiramis and Isis and uh, uh, Targetes and those Babylonian gods, they're all the same. We have, and, and the coin of the realm right now is still gold and silver produced by the United States Mint. It is official currency. This paper stuff, they, they, they took care of that back in the 1970s and the 1930s, you know, and eventually got even the coinage out of circulation in the 1960s. But the coin of the realm, the gold and silver coin of the realm of the United States produced by the United States men today still has on every, on every obverse of the coin, the front of the coin, that Lady Liberty, that goddess of Babylon. And if you go back and you've ever researched coinage throughout history, you often had kings or sovereigns or human people who actually existed on the obverse of the coin. And usually the reverse of the coin, you had some sort of god or goddess like Artemis or Athena or Zeus or, you know, some other sun god or pagan goddess or whatever on the reverse. But on America's coin of the realm produced by the United States meant you have on the front of that coin a Babylonian goddess. Could the WEF and China align in a way that would bring us to our, knee, our knees in one single day? I would think, yeah, they could do that. I think, their, I think their goals align enough to where they could get along enough to uh, achieve the same. The WEF has had it up to here with our rebellion, rebelliousness. Take a look at this recent video by Klaus Schwab. You have this anti-system movement. What we are seeing is a revolution against the system. So fixing the present system is not enough. Now there is, of course, an anti-system, which is called 
libertarianism, which means to tear down everything which creates some kind of influence of government into private lives. These libertarians want to tear down the system that bring government into our private lives. They've had it up to here with us. They have had it absolutely up to here. And so what do we do? Prepare. You homestead. When you push, I've said this so many times on my channel, when you push preparedness to its logical conclusion, you will always end up on a homestead. It gives you the ability to raise your own food, to grow your own food, to stockpile your own food, and to deal with the things, the hardships that absolutely will be coming because we have lived a life, a life in this country that has been absolutely unaccountable to our actions. We have spent money like drunken sailors. We are financially and economically broke. We are morally broke in this country. And this is the price we're going to pay. The best way you can deal with that onslaught of repercussions because of bad behavior is to get yourself on a homestead. All right. What do you guys think? Do you guys see an alignment here between China and the WEF? You know, I often say too, when in doubt, zoom out. And I'm zooming out and I'm looking at the picture and I see a definite possibility of an alignment between the WEF and China. And now there's this talk about the event. What will that be? I'm curious to hear your thoughts. Leave a comment below. If for some reason something does happen and I can't talk about it here on YouTube, and we'll know pretty quick, fast, and in a hurry if that's the case, because there's been other times where things happen, uh, war issues or some sort of thing happens, and I'm not, you're not allowed to talk about it on YouTube. Usually they let, they let up on some of those requirements over a period of time, but I'll probably talk about it over at Rumble, and you'll be able to find those videos over at anamericanhomestead.com. Please go by my website, anamericanhomestead.com. You can see the email newsletter sign up right there on the main page. We are going to start sending out stuff. You know, every so often, we'll probably send about out a few emails or a couple emails a month. So if you want to stay in touch, if for some reason I get yanked out of here on YouTube, you'll be able to stay in touch with me over at anamericanhomestead.com by signing up for that newsletter. And uh, you'll be able to get the, the latest videos that I post over at Rumble or other places, even if they take Rumble down. Maybe that's the event. Who knows? But go do that now at americanhomestead.com. Also, check out our merchandise over at teespring.com. You can find our best-selling shirt, our stupid should hurt shirt. If we had more hurt in this world, we'd have a lot less outright communist like Klaus Schwab <laughs> heading Dr. Evil type organizations uh, like the WEF. If, if only stupid hurt. See you next time in the homestead. Bye. Hey, guys, we know that a lot of our audience are homeschoolers. Homeschooling here is very important to us. Uh, and if you're like us, maybe you've had a hard time training your youngsters to memorize their times tables. Well, I want to introduce you to a program today that I think will help with that. This is Times Tales. It's perfect for small children. At age seven, my youngest son has his multiplication tables memorized, all of them. Times Tales is a series of stories that your child learns in a video. The video presents a simple story that your child can easily recall from memory and assist them in easily remembering the multiplication facts. My late wife, Jamie, made a video talking about how our oldest child still was having problems with times table memorization. Until we tried Times Tales. After months of getting behind and stressful struggling, Times Tales was almost an overnight correction and allowed him to get back on track with his math courses. So I want you to give this a try. They have different packages available, and there's going to be a link in the description below. Every purchase you make from this program is going to help the homestead. Give it a try. It worked for us. I'm sure it can work for you and your child, too. I know my math facts. Hey, hey there, thanks for watching our channel. If you're looking for great off-grid homesteading videos, this is the channel for you. Hit that subscribe button and be sure to like the video you just watched. You can also feel free to send us your questions by going to anamericanhomestead.com on our contact page and send me your question. Your question might get made into a video. In the meantime, check out some of these other great videos. Oh wait, go ahead and click them. Go ahead.